So here we have a lesser celandine, sometimes called fig buttercup amongst other names. This is uh, used to be um, used to be have its own uh, be considered ranunculus part of buttercup uh, genus. It's still in the buttercup family, but it's an Asian plant uh, that's been brought over, and it can cause huge problems. So even though it's very pretty, um, it can form a dense ground cover and just completely take off. And again, it may look very very pretty, but the reality of it is that this is an infestation of the stuff and very, very bad. Um, it crowds out many of her native plants, or particularly things like spring beauties and things like that. And this particular plant um, can grow in really wetland areas. It's very, very difficult to control as well because you can't just pull it. It's got little bulblets on the bottom. And if you break off and leave any of those pieces, um, that'll actually uh, reproduce into new ones. It actually doesn't produce a lot of seeds. It actually produces mostly because it, it lives with floodplains and as the water comes through and damages it, it carries away little pieces that then replant themselves all over and spread slowly down, you know, downstream. So this, this is an issue, of course. And uh, as it spreads, it takes over and outcompetes the native plant. It doesn't provide as much food for it, even though some, for wildlife, I should say, some animals do nectar on it, but not that many. And that's why it doesn't produce too many seeds. Um, this is a, a plant that, uh, that has much the same kinds of chemicals that other buttercups have, and so not a lot of animals can eat it. In fact, uh, it, used to, it can even cause blisters on people's skin, and there's stories of people using plants in the ranunculus family, including lesser, uh, this lesser celandine, to rub on their skin so they get these blisters, and so panhandlers would feel, uh, perhaps get a little bit more mercy if people saw them suffering uh, and would be able to, uh, would, 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 would want to help them out better. This particular plant has been used medicinally. Once it dries out, luckily those pro those uh, chemicals are no longer as active and so have been used medicinally. But you gotta be careful because uh, apparently if you don't do it correctly, it can cause different kinds of issues, including kidney damage. There is a native a marsh marigold, which is incredibly similar, taller growing, not as shiny. Um, and um, the leaves, if I can possibly perhaps get one to show you. Um, this particular plant has what's called sepals. You can actually see these little petal covers underneath, and that covers uh, the, the, the bloom before it opens. Those are called sepals. And on marsh marigolds, they don't have these little tiny covers underneath. And so that's one way to tell the difference. But frankly, I mean, as invasive as this is, good luck finding marsh marigolds anymore. Um, it was never a common plant, but the reality of it is it can't compete with this kind of stuff. And most of what you see is gonna be these infestations of lesser celandine big buttercup, a very nasty invasive and something that we really need to deal with. And unfortunately, the only way to deal with it is chemically. If you try to dig it out, what ends up happening, as I mentioned, is that you will push in these pieces and actually help, help it spread. So uh, this plant is treated with, uh, with uh, herbicides, um, uh, things that are safe to use near, um, near water. Um, they, they don't have the same things as, as ground up in that. They don't have the same surfactants. Uh, and so, uh, again, that's the only way, unfortunately, to really control this thing. Digging it out is not very effective. It just helps to spread it and disturbs the ground even more for more invasive. So lesser celandine, a nasty invasive and something that um, may look pretty. People talk about these wildflowers, but the reality of it is, notice there's not much else, but this is growing there. So it grows to the exclusion of all of our natives, but provides very little benefit for them, if any. Lesser Salandine, a nasty invasive. And uh, also an ephemeral. So it comes up underneath trees and so forth. Um, it'll bloom, and then before summer on sets and before the trees leaf out, it dies back. So this will all be bare patches if nothing else can grow in here too, which can lead to even more problems with erosion. A nasty invasive and something that we really are trying to control throughout um, the areas where it's 